you know, Modular AI's new programming language, Mojo, is taking the data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence domain by storm. And if you don't get ahead of this trend now, you are going to fall seriously behind. That's why I want to show you how to just get started with Mojo in Visual Studio Code. I want to show you how to create just a basic hello world, but I'm also going to show you a couple of interesting things that I think will really appeal to you if you're a Python programmer and maybe make you smile if you're a Java or C++ programmer. Hi. I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief of TheServerSide.com. I'm also the author of the number one Mojo programming newsletter, so please subscribe to that. There's a link in the description. And I've just got Visual Studio started up here in my Ubuntu Linux instance. Now, I've got a couple of other videos on how to install Mojo on Windows and how to install Mojo on Ubuntu. And how to bring up Visual Studio Code and install the Mojo plugin as well. So I'm not going to do that here, but check out those other videos if you don't have Mojo already installed. Once you do have Visual Studio and the Mojo plugins installed, just mosey on over to the open folder link, which is what I'm going to do after I log back in. It looks like I took a, a second too long there. I'm just going to click open folder. I'm just going to create a, a new project here. I'm going to call it my project because well, I like to project positivity as much as I can. That's just a new folder on my file system where I'm going to put all of my mojo code. And once you've done that, just add a new file to your project. But before you do that, head over to maybe Free Code Camp. Take a look at their list of emojis and find that fire emoji because one of the very coolest features of Mojo is that's going to make everybody in your organization want to jump on board with this programming language is the feature that you can use an emoji as an extension for your files. I'm not joking. So I'm going to copy that fire emoji, come over back into Visual Studio, click the new file button, and I'm going to type in hello underscore world dot not dot mojo. You can do dot mojo, but if you really want to be cool, you'll add that fire emoji in there. Click enter really hard and boom, all of a sudden you now have your editor open up. I'm seeing flames everywhere. Now, how do you do a hello world? Now, if you're a Python programmer, you may jump in and say print hello world. But if you do that, you are in a world of hurt because we don't do silly things like that in Mojo. Oh no, in Mojo, we don't have unguarded code. Everything has to go inside of a method, kind of like in C++ or in C or in Java. And Java and C, they've all got a main method. Well, Mojo's got a main method as well. You might even, call it a function because it starts off with fn and well the main method is called main round brackets colon at the end and it's still barking at me here you can see all sorts of red ink here like it was my grade 12 english essay you got to indent this stuff too so i click tab there but the Mojo plugin is smart enough to turn those tabs into one, two, three, four spaces. And with that done, I think everything should work here. I don't have any red ink on here. This is not a government budget. I can click the run button and boom, it fires hello world right back to me. So there you go. That's how easy it is to create a little hello world application in Mojo using the dot fire emoji. Now, by the way, I, I don't know how to actually just type in emojis. Um, <laughs> I don't have any emojis on my keyboard here. So I copy and paste it, but you could just use dot emoji or dot, not a dot emoji, dot mojo, right? That's fine as well. But the emoji is pretty cool. Now, if you're a Python developer, you might be saying, what's that F and F N right on there? And, uh, you know, uh, because in the world of Python, we don't have fins, we've got diffs, right? You always do DEF in Python. Well, in Mojo, when you use FN, that requires that you always do strict typing, right? It 
it requires that you always do safe operations, right? It requires and it enforces the fact that you're going to be programming using the Mojo philosophy for code, not the Python philosophy for code, but you can always write Python code inside of a Mojo application just by changing FN to DEF. And again, if you're familiar with Python, that's what you do in Python. So you can use DEF. Right? If you just want to write pure Python code, DEF all the way to all the way that you want. If you want it to be strict, you do FN. Now, here's the other cool thing. I can do DEF over here. But then I can do FN and say, oh, this is another hello world method. Right, so I've got another hello world method. And then I'll say print hello mojo world over here. And then down here, I guess I can just, well, why don't I comment out that line right there? Why don't we show you a comment? Jeez, we're learning so much right here, right? So there you go. The octothorpe is the comment in there. The pound sign, the hash sign, the tic-tac-toe icon. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, but to call a method, you know, in Mojo, it's just another hello world. Nothing crazy here. Um, that puts that oh i gotta spell things correctly that is one thing i don't like about mojo you have to spell things correctly and consistently uh hopefully they'll fix that one day but anyways here we go now we've got uh, a little piece of code where we can uh do uh i don't know a little bit of tomfoolery here let's see if that prints out hello mojo world click run and boom, all of a sudden we now have Hello Mojo World. So there you go, a couple of interesting things. So just right there in, oh, how many minutes are we recording now? Seven minutes and 10 seconds. Uh, we've taken a look at creating a project in Visual Studio Code. We've taken a look at the Fire, Fire Emoji extension, even taking a look at the difference between DEF and FN. Now, if you are new to Mojo, you're probably interested in the fact that it is, is it statically typed? I know that Python is dynamically typed and then there's like strongly typed and statically typed. And I think I saw legacy typed and like the, the typing just, I don't know. I don't know what the right definition is. I think it's statically typed, right? I know how to do it. I just don't know how to call what to call it. Typically when you work in a regular, um, a Python method, right? You can just say x equals 10, right? And then maybe you can just say print x. That should work. When you're working with Mojo, um, there's a little higher standard. Uh, you're supposed to actually declare your type. So down in the fn function here, why don't we get a little strict? Why don't we do things, oh, I don't want to say properly, because there's no proper way to do it, right? There's only wrong ways. There's no right way to do anything. There's only wrong ways. And as long as you don't do it the wrong way, you're doing it the right way. Um, right here, let's take a look at how we would declare a variable in Mojo. So in Mojo, we would say var y equals 12. Interesting, not too bad. Um, okay, that's kind of cool. Then maybe we could go down here. Y equals Y plus one. Life is good. So that's kind of the big difference between Python and Mojo. Can you Python developers handle this? Is this 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 is too complicated for you, right? I mean, that's the great thing about Mojo. It's like it, you know, it looks a lot like Python. Python developers are going to pick this up very, very quickly. The other thing, it's very familiar for JavaScript, Java, C++ programmers as well. So there's something in here for everybody, which is uh, good because this programming language is going to wipe all of the other programming languages off the face of the earth. Now we've printed uh, X up there. Why don't I come over here and print out the number Y. Okay. Now I don't have any red ink here. So I'm happy. I'm comfortable. Um, there, there was an error a second ago that I skipped over. I'll show it to you in a second. But uh, I'm going to go down here, Control-L, clear that, click Run to run it. 
and all of a sudden we get the printout of 13. Notice we, uh, from main, we call another hello world and then we go back to the top. So that confused me for a second there. I was like, why is the order out of place? But there you go, you see Y being printed first and then you also see X being printed after that. Now, by the way, we can also reverse the uh, orders of those methods. So we've got def main up there, we've got another hello world down here. I think like with Python, you usually have to main at the bottom, right? This class has to run like a script. Now this is a little bit more familiar to JavaScript or Java or C++ developers um, where the, the order of the, the methods inside of your code uh, doesn't matter. So that's pretty cool. Now, by the way, <laughs> I'm going to cause an error here. And well, it's not an error, it's a warning, but you might find this surprising. So right now, just by commenting out y equals y plus one, uh, I get a real slap on the wrist by Mojo. If I hover over this little var here, it says, whoa, 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 whoa. Y was declared as a var, but never mutated. Uh, consider switching to a let. Um, and in fact, if I try to run this code, it'll still run, right? It's just a warning. But again, it doesn't look happy. And you can actually see the environment just really beating down on me here, saying to me, hey, um, stop using var if this variable doesn't change throughout the code. So one of the things about Mojo is it, it's it's really focused on performance. It's, perf it's focused on optimization. And... If you have a constant in any program, any programming language, if you have a constant, there's all sorts of optimizations that compiler can do uh, knowing that that value is immutable, that value won't change. Um, so here, when it sees you using var, var meaning variable, and it doesn't vary, kind of the point of a variable, uh, it says, that's, that's not good, it's just, that's just bad. Um, and don't be bad, right? That's just a good philosophy in life. So it says, do this instead. And this is going to blow your mind if you're a JavaScript developer. <laughs> um, because didn't JavaScript just decide, figure out what let means just a little while ago? With Mojo, if you want to have a constant a value that doesn't mutate, you use let. Thoroughly confusing for JavaScript developers, but for me, it makes total sense. It's exactly what I would have done. Um, so yeah, now it's not barking at us, right? Now we've got a constant in there with let, and if we run this code, boom, all of a sudden everything runs and it doesn't give us any static. It doesn't bark back at us. So there you go. That's how easy it is to uh, uh, kind of declare your variables. Now, by the way, <laughs> you're, you're also, probably a little disappointed about how that uh, variable in the fn portion is declared. One of the things that will happen in a uh, uh, Mojo application is it's, it's statically typed, but uh, you don't always have to indicate what the data type is because the system will infer it. So with let y equals 12, the system is saying, Oh, okay, I know that's not a string. Um, I know it's not a SIMD. I know it is uh, not a button. <laughs> I know it's a number. So I can just infer that it's an, an int, right? Big I int. We'll talk about that later. Uh, it just infers it. But, oh, I said we'll talk about it later. Maybe we'll talk about it right now. You can explicitly state it. And so you can do this. And so you can say, hey, let y colon int. Now you're saying this is an int. You're... Is this strongly typing? Uh, you're statically typing? You're telling the compiler what the data type is. Now, this won't actually change the behavior of the program. You can't flip from an int to a string or anything like that throughout the code for that variable. Even with inferred variable typing, it's gonna remain that type throughout the program. Um, this just shows you how to do it explicitly, otherwise it's inferred. Now, you can't always do that. So with method arguments in Mojo, you need to actually provide the data type. You gotta do the colon and stuff. When you're using variables for classes in Mojo, in Mojo we don't call them classes. Mojo we call them structs. 
Uh, but uh, the idea is the same. We need to declare your properties. You have to declare them and explicitly state the type. By the way, that's the same way that we do it in Java. So again, if you're a Java developer and you feel like you missed out on the entire AI machine learning data science segment that Python took over, I'm telling you right now, this world of Mojo is going to need Java developers to, to help teach those Python kids all about object-oriented programming and static type typing, right? Um, but uh, I think Java developers will love this. I think C Octothorpe developers will love this. And I think that just developers of all stripes will love this. Okay, there you go. Well, I'm going to well, run that. You see if that works. And there you go. Hello, Mojo. Everything works just fine. So there you go. That's just a, a big overview of uh, how Mojo works, how to write a hello world. And I told you we did a lot more than just write the hello world. We <laughs> used the uh, emoji, fire emoji as the extension. We uh, used both def and fn and took a look at what the difference between the two of those was. We took a look at how to add comments to your code. We called one method from another, which, you know, if you're experienced Java dev experienced developer, it's not a big deal, but you know, it's kind of interesting. We even compared let versus var in our program and even took a look at how some of those warnings come out. So I think that's all uh, pretty cool and pretty interesting stuff. Now, as I said, uh, I really believe that uh, if you don't get ahead of this mojo trend now, you're really, really going to fall behind. So I would just, uh, I think it behooves you to uh, sign up for my uh, uh, Mojo newsletter um, so that you can keep up with all the latest stuff that's going on there. Um, subscribe to the channel and uh, all of that other stuff. Um, by the way, I would also say that um, if you're in the Agile or Scrum space, I just worked with uh, a young freelancer. There's her book behind me there, uh, Scrum Master Certification Guide. Uh, definitely pick that up. Another, I'll put the link for the description in that in the description as well. Also, I'm the author of, oh, there's my book, um, Pickering of Springfield. So um, just in case you didn't know, um, Springfield and the Simpsons are actually based on a small town in Canada called Pickering, Ontario. Um, we wrote a little book about it, like the highway that goes through Springfield and the Simpsons, the 401 highway that goes through Pickering, Ontario. There's lots of similarities like that. Here, buy the book. It'll tell you all about it. And uh, of course, I am the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com. So if you want to learn anything about Mojo, Java, Python, DevOps, Scrum, Agile, Git, GitHub, GitLab, head over there. We've got all sorts of articles. And finally, yeah, subscribe on YouTube.